Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to some hilly terrain here on Nita. I am the Heizmeister, and this is episode 39 of Ashes of the Empire, the core campaign with Damadog. Now, in the last episode, Dam and I defeated the Lightning Hoods and cleaned up the last remaining resistance that the Lightning Hoods have put up. In this episode, we will be facing a new adversary, and it is the last faction to be annihilated, the Onyx Watch, probably my most favorite faction in Ashes of the Empire. Um, yeah, definitely my most favorite faction. And <laughs> I would like to apologize in advance for um, the loud noises you are about to hear. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot to turn down the volume uh, of the game. And it appears that a uh, what's it called a 36 cram cannon salute is quite loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, blame the Onyx Watch for that. Oh no, actually we are also using cram cannons. Hmm. Yeah, you can probably guess what's coming up now. Fighting the Onyx Watch. Just gonna beeline to the fortress and call her done, huh? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Pretty Sounds much like that. Hello, Onyx Watch. Moving. 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 Listening. Is that what they're attacking? Yes. They oh, were shit. on their way down here. Okay, then. Good thing we had all this in the area. Ah, uh, yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, that was... Didn't yeah. you say before we declared war on them? No. <laughs> Oops. Okay. So we has, have to win this one. Um... I think we will. Without our... forces. Our ma- oh god, look at this! Yeah, that's uh... Those backstabbers are so tossed. Yeah. Move! Move, you fool, move! Too late! Nope, it's uh... Okay. They're armored fairly well, as I recall, they might be able to take a few cream. We made the bottom out of heavy armor, so we should have got it like in one shot, but I think we might have lost the laser just now on that. No. It's now immobile. It's been reduced that to might be a good static reason turret. To... Yeah. However, uh, we managed to defeat at least one bison. Yeah, but there are like, what, maybe a dozen in that force? Yeah. And look at this glorious cram barrage. Shame it isn't coming from our side. Yes. But uh, that's gonna fuck up something if it hits. Yep. yep. Made a nice big call. So it was a good call to bring Gustav Artilleries to the front line. Yes, I agree. Shame about the box though. I'm surprised more people don't try to build more front sider tanks. They're just so powerful in this setting. Well, I myself like uh, fast cruiser tanks more that speed around the enemy. Though, yeah, front sliding at at crab artillery is definitely worth it. We do have some limited air support here. And also, hash. From yeah, that overlords. looked like you had gutted the insides a bit. Ooh, Ouch. You know, getting your insides gutted. Yeah, that, those were my insides. <sighs> oh, look. The Overlord is repairing the bug zapper. Yeah, and since actually it's some all... pretty good timing right there, but uh, I'm afraid they might try to ram each other. Oh. Propaganda Lord. It is very much doing what it should. Yes. Who's a good repair drone? Yep. Now it has to repair itself. Yes. <laughs> but uh, we are handling these pretty decently, I gotta say. Yes, evading cram barrages and uh, returning the favor. We still got a bunch of other crap that haven't came in yet, so I think we'll probably do okay here. Need more boosters. Um, 
the war pigs look like they got a bit damaged, but that's kind of to be expected. As long as I see a red laser, I'm leaving them in the battle. Fair enough. And we missed. do need them. And here comes the freaking leash. Not quite sure. Oh, he's Let's going after the target. Dude. Also that popped a, a lot build. of chaos. Almost uh, a friendly yeah, fire was, incident, yeah. Actually, that bison is uh, coming a little bit close. Indeed. Mm. It's just me, or does Cram give up way too much smoke? Yes, it does. And in this version, it still does uh, produce a huge plume of fire and smoke. Mm -hmm. Hey, what the hell are these guys using? Black powder? Probably. Well, that would explain a few things. No, our beautiful war picks. They're being reduced to ash. Yeah, that one doesn't look like it's functional anymore. Nope. Actually, a lot of our vehicles don't look like they're functional anymore. Uh, Gustav seem to be doing okay. Yeah, let me just hop on here. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, I'm a shell magnet, apparently. Uh, having an exposed uh, driver's seat could be a bit perilous there. Couldn't it? Still firing. Yep. That's gonna... Yeah. Got bit in the ass. Can get a good broadside hit, then that would be fantastic. Kind of something like... Yes. If like that. If detonated right over it, would it? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> never mind. That was pretty impressive on its own. Yep. Looked like it gutted it. Holy shit. Yep. They took out one and uh, one and a half turrets. Yeah. That was pretty impressive, not gonna lie. Was that our overlord? That was our overlord. Um, it's making a decent bullet magnet right now, in all fairness. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it there. Krim struggles a lot against heavy armors. So maybe we should reduce the number of setting. guns on the field and make this our highest priority. Focus our efforts on one bison at a time. Kinda like this. There it goes. Flying. Actually, um... Warpick is at 58%. Nope. Get the Storm Tigers in. Yeah, Storm Tigers would do pretty well here. Speaker lot is down. Sons of Odin perform pretty well against these tanks, if I recall correctly. They are up next. And one down. Okay. So, where's the closest bison? There it is. Damaged, but still moving. Uh. I don't think those turrets are going to be doing much from here on out. Yeah, those broadside batteries, probably. Although we have uh, Sons of Odin on the field. I can see the Heshrons impacting. Mm -hmm. Very damaged Gustav here. He's just barely moving, but still working. Hopefully the recoil pushes it back enough to evade enemy fire. And that's it. <laughs> Armor piercing high explosive cramps. Look yeah, at this. I'm surprised this is not that different. Oh crap. One more shot should do it. Oh, just got shot to the side. 
Nope. What a shame. Didn't hit. Um, that's a Phantom Lord. Uh, also getting hit from the side. Chaos is asking how old this campaign version is. It's a 2.4.9 if that tells you anything, Chaos. Yeah. It's a little bit older. Yeah, but APS was worth a shit. Especially, uh, lasers and, uh, I mean, crabs. Crabs were well, still worth something. They were cheaper back then, were they not? And more powerful. At least their armor piercing properties were more powerful. Mm -hmm. As you can clearly see here. Uh, here comes the Gustav shell. Hello. <laughs> yep. Oh, perfect. Perfect hit. So then, I think there's one left. And Ow. that's the first battle with the Onyx Watch done. Yeah, the casualties weren't nearly as bad as I thought they'd be, too. I mean, not what we intended. Uh, I think some more of bison that just spawned in there over to the, yeah. Yeah. But those big missiles are gonna really fuck with them. And so they did. But also, Hesh. Mm -hmm. Hesh does the job just as well. Uh, the White Deaths do pretty good against them, too, as I recall. If I remember right, when I was back at 2.4.9, like, if you had five of them, they could neutralize a bulwark. Wait, five of what? White Deaths. Oh. They stay at range, don't they? Normally. Uh, they, you know, Constantly change their altitude, if I recall right, but yes. Oh, there's still one bison left. Looks like we have uh, missed one. I told you there's a ton of them in that force. I think I see another one behind the smoke over there, too. I mean, we're handling them pretty well, so I'm not too worried about it now, but man. They shouldn't we sneak have around the a flanks ton of them. so much. Or at least we shouldn't have left them sneak around the flanks. Oh, we got one Gustav engaging them. <laughs> this is what I miss in the current version, the recoil of cram cannons, kicking them back. Oh yeah. It, it makes you, it makes the gun feel powerful, you know, just... Yes. Adds a little bit of flavor to it. That one got pretty much annihilated there. Yeah. That is... Family built some fine tanks. Oh yeah, and especially um, I have to thank a Ion here, uh, who optimized the Gustav even further. Oh yeah. To make it. When a... we team up, we built some pretty cool shit. Uh, where's the rest of? Oh, there's the one. I think we might have sniped its AI or something. Uh, immediately. No. Oh yeah, we did. I'm not complaining, mind you. Okay. That happened. I'm surprised they didn't change up to the reinforced decking. Why is the Phantom Lord? Oh. oh. Do we get them all? Yep, we got them all. Finally, okay. we get to do something. Um. So, Receiving. you Paladin tanks, they should probably take a little bit uh, distance. There we go, Crusaders, the Chaos devices now. Receiving. Don't need all of them, but hey. Receiving. 
Gatling Lord, a lot of Minigo stuffs. So what happened last time? Um, multiplied by two. Receiving. Hammer, rammer. Do we need anything else? Do we even need carpet bombers in this one? It wouldn't hurt, but... I guess we... Do we have any in that... I don't know. ...group up there to the north? Let's oh my see. god, I can't even see anything there because of just the white... Really snow no. gets every... Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. Push to the finish line. Oh, there we go. We are airborne. Slowly falling. And... Yeah, we bounced a bit. Yeah. Um, where's the... Oh, there, there's the enemy. Did you ever see Inner Death fans of... Community campaign for this? Uh, I don't think I did. Yeah, he had that problem a lot too, where uh, the stuff would spawn in and they would either go underneath the ground or. <laughs> Here comes our cram barrage. Yeah. Uh, okay. He accidentally telefragged one of my tanks. Ouch. That's yeah. not a honorable way to die. Well, the crazy thing is, is I think it was in there from like the third episode, and that's like the only way it ever died in through the whole campaign is that it got telefragged because he spawned in friendly right on top of it by accident. Sad. And that was the original version of the uh, the mini blade. Hey, would you look at that? Our forces are mobile enough to traverse this terrain. Good to know. Powerful enough to pound the rhinos, I mean the, the bisons into dust. Well, and having weapon systems that arc is probably a huge advantage here too. Look at this. Oh! Right in the kiss ass. Yeah, it still seems like it may be functional though, so... Got that going for us. Good thing we built the Crusader tanks, they are really tough. And uh, also hard hitting. This one here is getting on my nerves now. Uh, let's bring in a chaos device to cause a little bit of conflict. Yep. The lamps in the paladin not working out like we intended, by the way. It is a little bit too I think weak. It I think it's lands might have gotten knocked out there though, because it took a pretty mean high explosive shot there. Might have just gutted it. Yeah, probably. No. Nope. Uh, yeah, the Crusader tanks are not disappointing at all. No, nope. I like them this way. I'm sure they are. I think there. we both did a bit of Tetris on them, as I recall. Oh yeah, we had to uh, compromise. Um, in a lot of places in there. The 200 or the 2000 volume limit is kind of a pain, yeah. Here comes the chaos. Scrambling enemy sensors. Look at this. The paladins have actually managed to maneuver around the. Um, Very like nice. The bisons. Yeah. You know, the chaos device, it, it's given me a few ideas here. Or ideas, I mean. Um, what if you had something like that that just kind of would orbit an enemy at a fairly close range? Something like a, a flyer, though, so it would be less likely to hit. That would be doable as well. Though you need to have a very low radar signature with this on a flyer and a very low, oh, that could very totally low be IL doable, though. signature. I think that could be doable. If you went with. Um, Steady blades and ion engines. They, those yeah, produce right. no heat. I'm not quite sure how you'd be able to power it though. Uh, you can't use RTGs, they produce a heat signature. Steam does too, I think, but now. Yeah. Oh, look at this firing line of just uh, 
ram cannons. And... Disappointing. You could make it out of light alloy. And just solely have it being propelled by daddy blades. That might work. It shouldn't have any trouble moving something around that's made out of alloy. I mean, that would reduce the radar signature as well. Ouch. Well. Oh, that was bad to happen. I mean, come on. They missed. Still. Um. Should be done with this in uh, a few seconds. Did we do APHE on those Crusaders? Yep, we have. Okay, I couldn't remember. It's been quite some time since I looked at them. Also, the Mini Gustavs are about to spawn. Which means I can probably pull those Paladins. Especially the one that just got yeah, absolutely wrecked. Yeah, we're probably gonna lose that one. Well, we were about to take some losses eventually. Oh yeah. That's war after all. Yep. Oh. Hmm. Probably should focus on this one here. Target locked. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Nice score, mate. Right? Yeah, that was a crippling blow oh, delivered that was by a great uh, hit there. Crusader tanks. Yeah, they're like good at the inside. They are good. I might want to pull yeah. this one. Receiving. Uh, the chaos device is still active though. Its insides haven't been breached yet, so that means its signal processor, I mean, uh, the ECM scrambler is still active. Okay, one less bison. Target locked. And... So we probably got about two, three hours of footage now. Yeah, but yeah. I'll edit most of it down to oh, I'm sure. four more episodes and then that's it. Yeah. Receiving. You are gone. Oh, and so we have um, three Gustav guns now on the field. I think it shows. <laughs> this is actually something I enjoy much more than those battles against the lightning hoods. Those cram barrages. Receiving. Oh, blame you. I mean, lightning hoods are just cheeky as hell because they move real fast and they're all armed with lasers. Uh, do we have anything? Yeah, still one. Bison, there's one paladin, badly damaged, but f still firing. What the hell is it aiming at, though? Uh, it was aiming at this one, but I guess it's totally got blown up. Target locked. Good thing you don't need to be that accurate with cramps. Uh, the timed one's not really. One is rather close. Actually, those two here might want to turn around. Any second now? No, it seems like these seem to be a little fixated on that one over there. Oh no, they're oh, turning oh, here around. Here he goes. Now. Yep, this is going to hurt. They should also be fairly accurate for cramps in this version. Having those long barrels and all that. Come on. Fire. 
Oh, damn. Ah. Nice. It bounced. Ah, uh, that one didn't. Neither did didn't. those two. Oh, there we go. Good hit. Yes. And... is that it? No, that's not so. it. There were a lot of bisons in this force. Bisons are a bitch to fight against in this. Uh, intercepted cram shells. Out of too many. Yeah. But uh, those were a fully packed barrage from the broadside cannons, so... I can see why it would do so much damage. Uh, oh, got a bunch of near misses. A whole bunch of near misses. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that one was a hit. Yeah. That turn's gone. Goodbye. Oh, here come the broadside guns again. Damn, if only Nashes didn't have a volume limit. We could make something like this as well. I know. Uh, how's that custom campaign going that you've been working on? Um, it is, I would say, halfway done. Nice. I may need another month. Maybe three weeks if I uh, keep at it. Mm. By chance, did you, uh, did I tell you about my proposal to basically rework, um, Quest for Neater? Uh, yes, yes you did. You're the one that actually gave me the idea for it, the way I've been refitting all those Onyx watch ships. Oh, oh yeah, really? I yes. just did it because, uh, I wanted to have something to do and felt like those designs were actually deserve the retrofit and be brought back. I agree. I liked how you were bringing the Onyx Watch back to its former glory. A big gun diplomacy. They deserve it. Also, I need those in the custom campaign. I figured that was another reason why you did that. Here we go, we got some hash rounds coming in now. Yeah, now it's uh... Well, we still have some cram cannons on the field. <laughs> yeah, but hash is, hash is brutal. And Especially in this, this version. is not the end. Yes. <laughs> I love this. Don't need huge missiles to have fun in this game. Didn't need them to begin with, but that's uh, probably a de debate we should save for another time. Oh, well, we took a lot of casualties in this fight, I guess. Eh, that just brings us closer to finishing this thing up, finally. Oh, there's another one. Not, of course there is. There's always another one. Target locked. Yes, uh, probably didn't need everyone to lock on this target since it's the only one left. You know, some cram bombers would probably do real good in this force. Cram bombers. Don't have any more, they got all got shot down, unfortunately. Yeah. Actually, somewhere in the distance, there's the White Death uh, sniping the bisons. 400 millimeter, 4 meter APS is amazing. Ooh. Now, watch this That's probably gonna be my favorite size of shell in any version. Boink. <laughs> that was lucky. Yes. Gotta admit. Yes, it was. I thought for sure they were gonna bury one in the ass of that tank and <laughs> just dodged at the last possible just moment. Bounced and then. Uh... Yeah. Look at the blood confetti. Oof. Oh, that one nice. went straight from the front all the way through the engine. Did I ever tell you I made a Mark II version of the White Death? Is it even 
that video though? Eight meter auto loaders. Ah. Oh. Listening. Moving out. That tells you anything. Yes, it does. I think so. Okay, do you want to fight more bison or, uh, or do you want to fight the treadstone? Receiving. 